Hello again. It may be called the Free State, but factional battles have stymied the provincial ANC. Former President Thabo Mbeki is visiting there to lead a unity project. Mbeki hopes to bring together allies of suspended Secretary General Isma Khashule and his political opponents, who are led by Mkolisi Dugwana. And the clock is ticking to unify the factions ahead of the ANC's provincial conference. And of course, all of that is building up to December for the National Elective Conference. Let's talk now to political analyst Dr. Oscar van Heerden. Oscar, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time. A very interesting development, this one. And I'm saying this just generally, and it's always dangerous to do that, but who would have expected that at this time the like of Thabo Mbeki would be asked by the ANC in the Free State, you know, to come and unite the factions there? Indeed, then. Uh, look, when, when, when the situation is tough, you call on all the, the help you can get. And as you know, um, it's not the first province to call on Tabun Beki. In fact, KZN also called on, on the former president. And clearly, they must have gained something from his intervention. Uh, hence, he's being called upon again to come to the Free State. Yeah, so, so the, how much is it important that that province, like any other structure of the ANC, is seen to be united, in fact becomes united uh, currently ahead of December? Well, this is critically important. I mean, I think there is an acknowledgement on the part of all the provinces and all the regions, and certainly the most basic structure, the branches, that uh, we simply cannot afford. You know, Dan, um, since 2007, I mean, there's, there's been contestation in the ANC, of course, at every elective conference, uh, dating as far back as 1991, when Chris Honey was also in the mix. Uh, we know of uh, situations where they called on Winnie Mandela to also be uh, involved in contestation. So contestation is a healthy thing. But since 2007, since uh, President Jacob Zuma won, uh, we find the situation where uh, it has just really paralyzed the organization. And every subsequent conference, and indeed the one that's going to happen in December, is going to be yet again a very divisive conference. I saw a comment in, in, in a media report uh, uh, that was attributed to Ace Mahashule, the suspended Secretary General, saying that uh, if the ANC continues to be factionalized, it won't exist come 2024. I mean, that's like a scary thing, a uh, prospect rather, to contemplate. But it's possible, is it, that the ANC can be further divided? Well, I mean, I think that if things go sideways at this upcoming conference in December, there's likely to be yet again some breakaways. There's likely to be uh, splits within the party. I don't know whether it will necessarily say it's the end of the ANC, um, but certainly if they don't come with a united position out of the elective conference this coming December, the, the masses, the people, the voters are certainly going to uh, express themselves in 2024. And I think it will be an expression of displeasure, uh, staying away, and it could very well mean that the ANC dip below the 50% mark. But for now, the move then to call on a veteran leader, somebody who's highly respected historically within the ANC, uh, uh, on our continent and globally, the like of Tabo Mbeki, to step in and help a province like the Free State, should be seen then to be significant. Absolutely, Dan. I mean, you know, they are really pulling out the big guns. You would also recall that uh, former President Khalima Mokrante, former Secretary General of the ANC, was also being called upon on various occasions to come and intervene, come and talk in Mpopo and elsewhere. And so it's clear that there is somehow some comrades in the ANC that feel that there is still room for reconciliation, there is still room for unity uh, and so forth. Um, I just don't know whether that is going to be the case, because the, the situation is dire for a number of comrades, including Ace Mahashule, who is facing corruption charges, uh, possibly jail time. And so there, there is a faction within the ANC that has just too much to lose. 
and I'm not sure if they are interested in unity. Yeah, I was going to ask you on the back of that. I was thinking, as you were saying there, I'm pleased you got to that point. Can Tabombeke succeed if there are so many challenges and, and there's a deep division already and uh, leaders, I mean, like uh, the Secretary General has been suspended. Never happened in the history of the ANC in its 110 years. I mean, uh, can he succeed? Well, it's a difficult one, Dan. I don't know whether he will succeed. I mean, I think he will try and give it his best shot. Um, I think that there's so much that needs to change. It's not just about uh, factions seeing eye to eye or coming together and holding hands. There's problems with the constitution of the ANC. There's problems with how they elect people to go to conferences in terms of money going around. And there's so much. And of course, there's also those that argue that the ANC is just too big. Uh, perhaps it should be smaller. Uh, you know, better few, but better. Uh, and so on and so forth. So I think he's got a mammoth task. Uh, I'm not sure how he's going to approach it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess the, the people in the ANC are saying we must at least try. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen some of these clips in the last few years of Tabombeke engaging with ANC branches and various committees and when he's, he's reminding them of their historic the historic mission of the liberation movement and, and how they should be governing. We've seen all of that. And he's, he was very uh, 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 hopeful when he was president that the, the ANC can sort of become a modern politic, political party. And these features that we're seeing now, driven mostly by access to resources and tenders and all kinds of things, are, are, are really showing the ANC to be struggling to modernize itself. Absolutely. You know, uh, post-1994, we always knew that uh, there would be huge challenges in terms of the transformation project uh, and so forth. But I think the one thing the ANC and others perhaps did not contemplate was that the biggest enemy was going to become money. Money, money, and more money. And people are prepared to take shortcuts, to be corrupt, to, to be fraudulent, uh, etc., so that they can take uh, a shortcut to wealth and accumulation, and this has been the bane of the ANC in municipalities, in the provincial governments, in national governments, etc. And that is why the leader of the ANC, Ace Mahashule, in the Free State, suspended Secretary General, is facing those corruption charges, as you said. Tough, tough one indeed. But anyway, we'll have to see what happens there on the ground. Thank you very much for your insights and your time, Dr. Oscar van Heerden. He's, of course, a political analyst.